We convert the agenda here to be an agenda of worshiping Elohim. Yes. Declaring that the blood of Jesus is upon us. Yes. And that no hand of the enemy shall be lifted against anyone. Yes. Therefore the altars that are lifted here against your will now. We nullify them and destroy them. And by faith we believe Jehovah. We are now in a place that is acceptable in your presence. And therefore we welcome you now in this place. The Lord you can come and interact with us. As it shall please you. Holy Spirit, you are invited. Come and speak to us. Come and take evidence. Thank you, Jesus, for what you do. We thank you and give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, there is no need of coming so early and then you become a backbencher. Utashiko na spirit ya backbencher. Kuja hapa tu karibu. Na itakua vizuri. Hallelujah. The Lord is with us. We thank God for the signs of the rains. And we pray that let the rain continue. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we thank Him also for the gift of love that He has given us even this morning. So, um, in the interest of time, thank you so much for you people. Uh, bring your best to be here early enough. You've had uh, some good time to pray in the seat. And therefore, we want to get into the world, and we know God is going to bless us. Hallelujah. I want you to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, as I sit in this sanctuary, my faith is tuned to you. From this place, you shall speak to me, you will minister to me, I will be transformed. I will receive my blessings and you will be glorified. You will be lifted in this place. Allow me now to worship you in truth and speak to me through your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Demons come in hierarchies. There are demons that don't attack you simply because you came to church. They are as weak as that. Hallelujah. Because they are not permitted to follow people where they meet for fellowship. But now they exchange and bring the demons that have the capacity to generate people when they are in the fellowship. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, uh, by coming to church alone, I want to tell you there are demons that automatically you defeat. There are also demons that you defeat by confessing like the confession that you've made. There are things that you speak and those things alone, they carry power and they are able to overcome certain spirits. I want to talk about a very important thing today because I know this is a leader's capacity building service. I want to talk about responding to God's call. Responding to God's call. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a big question that many people are struggling with. And we've got so many believers in the church who are not taking any action because they believe it is a pastor who is called here and maybe the other assistants and other ministers and a few church leaders. And therefore, you tend to see believers becoming cold when it comes to witnessing and rising. Remember when we started, we said that for God to entrust us with big things, there must be building of capacity. Because you can't entrust a weak person and great thing. Are we together? So, if you want to be entrusted and great thing, then you must give the reason as to why. So you must prove your capacity to deliver. And we are very intentional in whatever we are doing. We want to provoke God and we want to interact with Him in a very close manner so that God can begin to entrust us. I'm just feeling a reminder in my spirit that that God is not just entrusting us with the people who come here and they feel they're in the right place. But he also wants to entrust you with precious things. 
is when you build capacity, you give God a chance to allow people to be a blessing to your life. There are people that God cannot allow them to give you that chance. Doesn't matter how much you pray. Because of capacity issues. But when you build capacity, then you are able to be trusted by God. There is a level of trust that you can never get to because of capacity issues. People think these things is just heresy, but it is not a heresy. It is true. Even though there are people that you cannot trust, they have not done anything wrong to you. But something in your heart tells you you don't trust him with more than 500 shares. The person may be an Akukopa person, but you feel the limitation. Actually, to uh, Tambia, what security will I have? Because of trust. So, I feel in my spirit that some of us have not enjoyed certain benefits in this kingdom. Simply because there are areas in our lives that we have not developed and nurtured them to grow. And those areas, they contribute a lot to how much God can trust you. Now, when we say that God is going to trust you, it's not necessarily him and you directly. Remember, God deals with people to deal with other people. So you can't claim that you can be alone in this life and say that God is with me. Because if you pray to God to bless you with a job, there is a certain rich man somewhere with a company who is going to hire you. Hallelujah. You will not find money raining in your sitting room and say, God has blessed me with the money that I asked you. Well, we have had such encounters happening, but how many times? Praise the Lord. We know Jesus removed the money from a fish. So, Tell me how many times that happened. And the things that don't have repetition, we always say that those things, they can't qualify to be a doctrine. Because a doctrine must confirm with the patterns. And if there are no patterns, then it means it is not something that somebody else can use to achieve the same results that were achieved by the other person. In education, we can say there is a pattern. We know you can start to be a pilot and become one. And there is a way to do it. Hallelujah. But we don't have a doctrine that can convert you from a woman to a man or a man to a woman. For God to trust you with a calling and to make sure that people will be at peace with you and people will be led to invest in your life. It is not because you stood in front of people and you preached a good gospel and casted out demons. There are people who do all these things, but still there are things that God has withheld. Cannot release such, such things to those people. Why? Because there are areas in their lives that they need to mature up, to develop, and to build that they can be trusted. Praise the Lord. And I told you last time that people judge things by judging the consistency, by judging the passion, by judging the intention, by also judging how other people respond to you. In digital marketing, there is a page we call the views page. It is said that 66% of people decide to buy something from a certain person or a certain shop because of the convictions that come from the reviews. What have other people said about you? Hallelujah. So when we talk about building these capacities in our lives. It's not just for the church issues only, but also your own life. 
You should ask yourself, why is it that people don't trust you? That this should be a problem to you. How comes people cannot trust me? You should need to ask yourself the question. How comes a year can end and there is a certain blessing that I have not encountered? That which should be normal. In normal lifestyle, there are blessings that we need to, to encounter here and there. Hallelujah. It should be a problem. It should be a problem. If I can stay for one month and I've not received a strange blessings from somebody that I don't know, I'll ask myself questions. But every time I see strange people blessing me, I did not ask them for anything. Just say, I've been following you on YouTube. And I failed to bless you. So what has made that person? There is something they have followed. Now, it is not because they loved my, my face, not anything, but they followed probably the content of what I'm talking about. And they felt convinced, I can trust this man with this blessing. Hallelujah. So, in your workplace, there are responsibilities that people cannot entrust you with. And to ask yourself why. Unless they are doing some corruption and therefore they don't want you there because they know you'll be like an obstacle. That's another thing. You know, within your friends, today if you are to raise like a certain amount of money and you call friends, how many friends can help you to achieve that? You know, people, we school to assess yourself always and Ask yourself questions. Hallelujah. If today you have a function somewhere, a special function, and you want people, need people to come, what is going to compel people to feel that I need to go to that place because I've been called by so and so? There should be a reason. So you build capacity in many ways. The way you interact with people, the way you live with people, your social life, the way you respond to other people's issues. All those things, they all later add up to something. Otherwise, you start doing things and nobody is responding and you start casting out demons that are not there. The problem is, before it got here, how was your life before this happened? Hallelujah. How was your life? And if you want to be a leader, an effective leader, we say that you must have influence. And influence is not just about people following you. It's also about responsibilities following you. It's also about resources and other things becoming available and possible in your life. That is influence. Hallelujah. Influence is both in resources, in people, responsibilities and all that. Influence. If there is a meeting at home and they all agree, ah, okay. They need your friend. Yeah. Neno ama kuongoza maombi. Ama maybe kuongeresha watu. Ah, hapa msijali. Tunakuanga na MC kwetu. Ama tunakuanga na mtu wa mungu kwetu. I mean, you are not the one who said it, but they feel that you are the one who should be in that position. That is influence. If you are a leader and you have no influence, that there is a the people cannot trust you. Then, uh, then there is a problem. So the following tips will guide you well to succeed in the assignment of the kingdom. Remember, we said the topic is responding to God's call. Now I want to give you this point and then we finish. And point number one, and I say this, brethren, that every believer has a level of calling that God has given that person. There is, there is a way. And the reason that's why the church of Jesus Christ is not rising is because one, the way we pastors, we presented the gospel. It's like we did not 
put the responsibility on the followers to also feel that they have the responsibility to advance this agenda of the kingdom. And therefore, we have centralized everything that is until the pastor is there. That is when things can move. So I want to say that every, generally every believer has a level of God's call upon him or her life. And there is an assignment for every believer, one of them being to make disciples for Christ. So every believer has an assignment in the kingdom of God. Even fighting poverty is an assignment. You need to change the way your children will look like. You need to change the way your grandchildren will look like. My grandfather never left me with anything. You need to be a grandfather who will leave your children with someone. Not your very old children, your grandchildren. Hallelujah. Somebody who will affect many generations. So when we talk about advancing the kingdom of God, it's not just about preaching. There are many demonic activities that happen to believers. Poverty is an oppression from the devil. And when somebody is struggling like that, you are so much prone to compromise, manipulation, and many other weaknesses. Then it means the devil is using that tool as his weapon to frustrate the agenda of God and the assignment that God has with your life. And therefore such things should be fought mercilessly until you rise. Hallelujah. So, when you talk about advancing the kingdom of God, it's in many ways, including the way you raise your very own children, the way you connect with them, the way you direct them. When we were coming with my wife, we were just discussing what are we going to do with our children this holiday. And so we were just saying, first we need very intentional time with them. And so we were saying, you will sit with your girl, me, I'll go out with my boy. And we were saying, let everybody choose where they will go out. And you have a boy to boy talk, and they will have girls to girls talk. Hallelujah. So that's this holiday we can have a target. What shall we achieve? If we don't do this, there are places that are not going to have balance. So if you want to less, if you want to really be very successful in responding to, to God's call, as I want to say that there is grace for those who respond to God's call genuinely. There is grace for them. There is grace for that for those people. And you have to be very intentional. Number one is be intentional to serve God. That is number one point that I want to say. If you want to respond to the assignment, what is being intentional? If you are a believer who does not think about anything else, I'm here to receive financial breakthrough. I'm here to receive I don't know what I do. That is good. By the way, there is no problem about that. But what else are you here to do for God? Even outside the church, why are you there? Being intentional to serve, it means from today I decide mentally, spiritually, emotionally. As I will be sitting in the church or as a believer, even outside the church, I'll be the exact person who has an assignment to do something for the sake of the kingdom. You need to be provoked, a provoked believer. So wherever you are, you are, you are restless because you feel there is an impact that you need to cause in the kingdom. If maybe like teacher Carol is there at the school, you need to develop systems in that school where God will be glorified. If there is no Christian union, it's up to you to know how you can come up with such systems of worship. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then it might not bring itself. So being intentional is being lady and willing. And you are the one who is deciding it. So there are many believers who are not decided to become anything extra. They just want to be there. They're not decided to become anything extra. So, I want to say this. 
You need to think about an assignment. An assignment that you would want to be doing for God. It is, it is wrong for some people to miss churches here for even a whole month. And you know them and you know they are your brothers and sisters. And you can't even afford to make a call because that one we are waiting for uh, a certain leader to do. It's good to chat somebody. That is assignment. I mean, we need to have an activated fellowship. A fellowship that is active. You don't need to be full time. So when you become intentional, you create some quality time to build yourself and also to plan how to serve others according to God's will. You seek God more than usual for his anointing and revelation so that you can be productive in his work. So when you are intentional about responding to that call, it means certain things in your life will change. The way you carry yourself, it will change. Reading from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, the Bible says from verses 1, And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the twentieth year of Ataxes, the king that wine was before him, and I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had not even been before time sand in his presence. Wherefore the king said to me, Why is your countenance sad, seeing you are not sick? This is nothing else but soul of the heart. Then I was very sour afraid. Now you see, when Nehemiah was a cupbearer, so when he went to serve the king, the king realized that this guy is not happy. Which is not his normal way of this serving, you know, when he's doing things. He, he does it with a lot of joy. He is happy. But this time the king is complaining. Why are you sad? And the king is saying very well, I know you are not sick. <laughs> then what sickness is Nehemiah suffering from? Because it is not health issues. It is the assignment issues. Hallelujah. So the guy was very intentional in what he wants to do and achieve. And you see, and the king said, and, and said to the king, let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my fathers, the scriptures, lies waste and the gates thereof are consumed with fire. This guy is now responding to a call. Hallelujah. So a call is always attached to an assignment. He's, he's very intentional in what he wants to do. And that is why he's even affected. Therefore, a genuine call when somebody is intentional, it must change you. Praise the Lord. It must change you. Even if you develop a burden to change your family, probably maybe you can say, one of my projects for my family this year, I want to pray for peace and unity. The way my brothers, my sisters, and my parents, the way there's no unity, people cannot sit together, nobody can face each other. My agenda this year, I'll be intentional. And Lord, I stand as your servant. I will not be an apostle, I will not be a prophet, but I stand as one who believes in you and what you can do. My family this year, there must be peace. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Serving God outside even the church setup. You make, you have a strategy. You be intentional. There are many things that are laying in waste. And for this reason, Jesus Christ has brought light to us. And this light is the one that we need to spread to others. What are you planning to do intentionally? As one who is called of God to change things in life. 
including your very own life, you can decide, oh God, I want to have a, a special gift of the Spirit this year. I pray that God, you grace me. Give me a gift that can heal cancer all the time. That I'll be happy guarantee every time I lay hands on somebody with cancer, the person shall be healed. What do you think if people realize that you are curing cancer? What do you think will happen? Jesus Christ will be glorified. Jesus Christ will be lifted. Our God will be respected and honored. And I want to tell you, you'll be more than a celebrity, you'll be more than a head of state. You'll be more than a currency, you'll be more than a US dollar, you'll be more than a euro. You'll be bigger and more valuable than any currency. Of the world, that one of the manakubwas are. You'll be more valuable, more than the Kuwait dinar. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you must be intentional. God equips intentional people. By the way, God knows the people when you're afraid of rare, and He knows the people who are serious, who are in the business of the kingdom. You can even decide that God established me financially. A lot of my agendas, I might not be standing there to preach, but this church hall plant contribution, I will silence it alone. Hallelujah. I will silence it alone. You see, I was surprised. I've been fundraising for the, the Nigerian man from Kalonia that I wanted to come. I've asked for this money in the group. And nobody is giving like this. People are just saying, that's somebody that I've never seen. She sent me 200,000. Amen. Amen. It is in this form. Somebody that I've never seen. And you don't know whether she's blue or black. They even don't know whether I'm conning or I'm just trying to use gimmicks. To Pastor Ken, I've, I've seen your intentions are always right. I've judged the intentions that you always have. They are always to promote the kingdom. I don't feel any loss doing this to you. I've tried to, to say, can we have a, a, a virtual meeting on, on, on Google Meet? It's a lady. And you don't need a meeting for this. I have a meeting already with my God and we have settled the matter. When you become intentional, God commands the resources. So the things that I'm talking about here, brethren, I'm not just speaking monkey business. I'm speaking. This morning, I found 100 euros from UK. Somebody, this one we met in Nigeria. He lives in the UK. But I just sent him the link and I told him this is what I'm doing. So it was 15,400, I think, and 56. For the same contribution. But here in Kenya, nobody is responding. But the guy said, Esther, I am very intentional in what I want us to achieve. And if you don't do it, we will not be frustrated. The help of the Jews will still come, but from another, another source. Be intentional to serve. Sometimes don't even prove a point to anyone. Don't! You may not have a lot of influence. When I was coming from Mombasa, Somebody said, Pastor, I want to, to do an air ticket for you back to Nairobi. At that time, I didn't call my mother and told her, I want to book the train for 10 p.m. so that I can be in Nairobi at 3 a.m. And I had left Papa Sheva with my car, so I told him, at around 3 that day, I'll call you to pick me at Shokima. And I said, Is it, are you going back to me? Yes. Air ticket on me. I said, My God. What is this? What is this? There is a way different you can live until people trust you. Whether they know you or not, God is going to amplify that voice in their spirit. And He's going to cause them to trust you and invest in you. Number two. They want to respond to God's call. See it as an opportunity. Some people see it as a burden. See it as an opportunity. Now, you must have 
have very clear concerns in this kingdom, sons. Whether you are helping people as a way of trying to spread the love of Christ to them, you need to be very clear and take it as an opportunity. Take it as an opportunity. People in churches they feel it as a burden. They feel it as a burden. They don't see it as an opportunity to serve. I want to tell you. I've gone through all things that can cause me to feel that this work of the kingdom is a burden and it is not a blessing. But I've never allowed that with my wife to enter us. We've suffered through things financially, rejection, a lot of things. But we always see it as an opportunity to serve. Imagine with this money, I can decide to do something else. And they will not know. Actually, the person said, I don't need accountability. Now, imagine a person speaking like that. I don't need accountability. God, my God knows that it is in the right place. I don't need accountability. Now, I see it as an opportunity. That when I stand in my family as one who can stop the devil from terrorizing my family, my relatives, I see it as an opportunity to become a vessel of God, a vessel of honor. I see it as an opportunity to serve God's people. I don't see it as a burden. I don't see it as a chance to manipulate people. I see it as an opportunity. How do you see it? The attitude that you have in responding to God's call is what opens doors for people. Hallelujah. I don't need to show very graphic things to show that there is a problem. And I start crying. I don't need those gymnastics. When you know that God has judged your heart and he has realized that to you, serving him is an opportunity, you are saying, and that privilege which can be taken away. So you want to manage it very sensitively. Then you are giving God a reason as to why he needs to trust you. Why he needs to cause people to trust you. In Matthew chapter 9 verse 37, there is something that Jesus said to his disciples. The Bible says, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few. So, there is an opportunity for you to be a worker. There is an opportunity for you to be a what? A worker to serve God. Now, if we have a church that is thinking in this direction, we will have a sound Pentecostal church that is serving God without other interests attached. When God calls a believer, it is up to you to see it as a specific privilege and opportunity to make a difference and the impact in the lives of people positively. So, it is an opportunity for you to make a difference. It is an opportunity for you to make a difference. Both in your life in the lives of others, and also using this kind of a platform, a ministry. You must also understand that this opportunity of God's call has come in its perfect timing. Why God has placed you where you are right now? It is because it is a time for you to do something at this time. Yes, it is time. You are not where you are all the days of your life. Another time will come when you'll be in a different location, maybe geographically. This is a time to do the right thing. This is a time to respond to serve. This is a time to trust God for His grace. Hallelujah. In the, in the case of Isaiah, this 
opportunity came in that time when Uzziah died. Not that really Uzziah all penned away for Isaiah. People have misinterpreted that scripture so much. When the Bible says that in the days that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And an evangelist will preach saying, Somebody must die for you to see the Lord. Because the days when King Uzziah died, I saw, Isaiah saw the Lord. No. It was, it was just an event, a coincidence of things. That in the days when President Ruto came to power, it was the same time when we were relocating to this place. You know, it, I mean, it's just an event. There's nothing special. You, it's like you're trying to explain when did that thing happen. It was during politics. So, is it that the politics were used to be the adult for that? No. You're trying to explain. And people have preached like that, that gospel. And people have said, hallelujah. Usia had nothing to do with Isaiah seeing the Lord. It was just during that time when that man died. Because Isaiah was to, to tell the people. Exactly when did this encounter occur? It was when there was that time season of death when of so and so. That is the time when I was seeking the Lord. And that is when I saw him. Are you getting it? How many people thought that it is Uzia who made as desire to see the Lord? Just lift your hand. I want you to be honest. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. So you have the wrong gospel. <laughs> but deliver. You better get deliver. <laughs> so, your will to obey God should be a free one and without any compulsion. And that is when you will truly work for him and that is when it will truly work for you as well. Bina so you must set it as an opportunity. There's a song that goes It's a privilege to serve the Lord It's a privilege to serve the Lord It's a privilege to serve the Lord Walking in the right of God Walk, 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 walk in the light. Walk, walk, walk in the light. Walk, 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 walk in the light. Walking in the light of oh God. It is a privilege. Utalika, rakini kuna watu watakuta wa elawi na kuwanga privilege. Waifanya, na mungu wafanya na wawia na fanyala na wale watu wanasutumikia we. Kama ni nafasi tu imepatikana. Kwa sababu kuna wengine wanatumikia shetani kama nafasi hiyo. Lakini kuna wengine pia wanipewa ya nafasi na mungu wa maitoa. Kwa ni solo alifanyo nini? Baka mungu wakasema, I regret why I made solo a, a king. Ika wadolewa. And the Bible says, and an evil spirit from God, not from Satan, came upon him. Number three, if you want to respond well to a call, see God's ability in you. See God's ability in you. It is not you to do it. Kuna mungu ambaye atafanya akikutumia wewe kama chombo. Hallelujah. Maybe you have heard people say that God does not call the qualified. Instead, He qualifies the called. That is true. That is true. Qualifications are fisherman Peter. Zilikuwa bani. Zakufanika apostle. Nipati ya mwote. Na ye hapo. Hata kuna wakati ya yona kama ima neno ya yeti vizuri. Akarundi kwa kazi yako. God does not call the qualified. So sometimes you see Angalia Hibi, who can Maria Dami Yen who can she dispose of the same as you become a woman one night. Sometimes you see Angalia, who want to feel me and Gukamara Mingi, Kwamambo, Haravuna Sema, I, Mimi, Mimi, 
mimi ni wale wa shetani tu ngata tu nivumilia hapa ndio labda Mungu atanirudia siku moja usiangalie historia yako ya vitu ambazo hata umependa sivili kwa masikio za watu ambazo umefanya na maisha yako lakini unajua vizuri kabisa kwa moyo wako umeamua sasa mimi ni wa Mungu alafu ukubali zile vitu sikukudisqualify god calls and disqualifies and he qualifies them to become his vessels mimi nilivuta hapa nilikuwa na qualification gani ya kuwa pastor wenu leo nikikula mera na vitu mingi unaona so it is God who qualifies people so in the manner in the same manner whenever God calls you to an assignment you must recognize that he has deposited relevant gifts in your life so that you can deliver that assignment Hallelujah. By the way, you are not just born again for you to be there. You are born again because there is an assignment that God has with you. It will be a loss if to death you think your work was just to be born again and there is nothing else to do. Including in your very own life, including here in the church. You are not born again to be idle. Hallelujah. So, you need to see God's ability in you. This does not always need to do with the competence. I personally am not perfect to date. I am seeking perfection from God every time. I want to to experience that fullness of God. But I always trust in the grace the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Knowing that it is his ability that is going to cause me to do the right thing. I'm limited in many ways. You do things to me I'll be very annoyed. In a way that I'll not be productive in the things of the kingdom. But master Jesus comes and helps me to manage that. And I begin to come back again. And he begins to trust me again. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh yes. I want you to see Isaiah's story in Isaiah chapter 6 verses 6 to 7. <laughs> the Bible says, Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal which he had taken with the tongs from the altar and he touched my mouth with it and he said behold this has touched your lips your iniquity is taken away and your sin is punished mm-hmm. remember this is Isaiah 6 so from Isaiah 1 Isaiah was still working as a prophet with unclean lips we have so many unclean lips even today but we must trust in the god of heaven who refines men to come with his call hallelujah Amen. and do that thing unachomwa vizuri hiyo mosheda inaisha wote ni nini jumbo shada tunatoa makamoto siku ingine unajaribu kuongea mambo ya watu na unakimbia nakisikia watu wanaongelea nini unatoroka kwa sababu hautaki ikuje tena unajua kuna vitu unafanywa unasema kai hiyo hiyo ya mwisho nisikutie hapo tena haleluya unachomwa na wakamo Isaia alikuwa ametabiri. <coughs> alikuwa nabii hiyo kwa muda yote lakini midomo ikiwa na meraa. <laughs> Haleluya. Sasa <laughs> mdomo kama ni mchafu. Si naweza kuwa na hivi. <laughs> na wakati ilifika Mungu alifika hapo chapter 6 
akaanza kumsaidia so see god's ability mungu ndiye anajua nini unahitaji wacha kuongeza madoido mingi kama umeona ni kama watu wanasikia vizuri nikichoma nywele alafu nifanye hivi ndio watu wasikie niko the updated man of god wacha na hiyo ya huko haleluya you know god when he was directing the house of Jesse when they were trying to to get them the person to be anointed and they were getting the wrong people all the time they were glorifying people according to human standards and they brought in the lineup all the guys who looked like they would deliver and the oil could not pour on those people because they cannot see God's ability they are seeing human stature it is possible that somebody with the spice here maybe the next few years it could be the person who will take you places you never imagined don't despise people there is an ability of God in people that you may not live to see but once upon a time you repent and say oh god i am a man and a woman of unclean lips i did it know that there was one thing in that person i wish i treated that person well nicely but now i have no way of i don't have a way of approaching that person hmm. there is an ability of god in people's lives that you never live to know they didn't know about him they knew him as a shepherd a boy who is doing his job in the in the bush trying to look after his father's sheep but god in heaven is seeing the king of israel there is an ability that was in him that his own brothers and parents could not see you have god's ability may any ability in your life that has not been discovered may God stir it up that is going to cause it to be discovered Amen. right now you could be doing things that don't look like they are responding well but your time is coming when God's ability itakutetea na itakutetea kwa nguvu hallelujah point number 4 how do you respond to God's call build a burning desire to serve God build a burning desire you can't serve God if there is no burning in you this point when i was talking about david god ended with that statement saying that men look on the outside but god looks in the inside god looks in the heart so it is in the book of 1 samuel chapter 16 and verse 7 but the lord said unto samuel look not on his countenance or on his head of his teacher because i have refused him For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth for man looketh on the outward appearance but God look but the Lord looketh on his heart So now you see the qualification of men is always on the outside appearance So it is possible that there are things that God is doing with you and in you that even your pastor may not be aware Even your fellow believers may not be aware even your family may not be aware they will just see you doing normal things but in the heavenly realm it is very supernatural but they look now here hallelujah so first now uh, point number four is saying that build a burning desire to serve god So by answering God's call you are choosing to step out and to address the need of the people according to God's assignment. 
So you must build a burning desire to serve God. It is not easy to serve people. It is not easy to serve men. It is a complicated adventure. Sometimes you are serving people who don't realize the benefit of what you are trying to introduce to them. It's a big challenge. We had a, a meeting yesterday, an online meeting with one of the daughters of the church here who, is, who doesn't live in Kenya. I've been encouraging her to serve where she is and she has been. And even she was given now on a mandate. Now she's overseeing a big cell group of about 30 people. And those are people from Europe, Pakistan, India, from Asia, all that. And so she was telling me, Pastor, how have you been serving all these years? I asked her why. This is becoming difficult for me. What is difficult? Are you the pastor? No. Are you the assistant pastor? No. Are you the treasurer? No. Are you the chair leader of the church? No. What are you? I'm just leading a cell group. And it is difficult. Yes. Hey. Okay. Difficult. Leading a cell group. So what is difficult? You know what? There is a whole bus assigned standard to pick people from their houses, their doorstops, and take them to church for a fellowship, for a service, and they go home full of one, and the same bus returns them back to their doorstops, and it is fully paid. They're not supposed to pay anything, but they don't respond. So. Pastor, I can have a big career and a mafia. Why is your group not performing? Pastor, what do you do to a mature pastor who is a Christian <laughs> who confesses Jesus as Lord, who has come to look for money where we are because we are not even from that nation, all of us? Who, who will party a bus, who can talk about money where we are, who can talk about money where we are, who can talk about money where we are, who all these years. I have imagined Pasi. When I was social media, I was able to do it. 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 I hope you are not one of the people who do this like that here. It's not easy. So, unless you have a burning desire, and pass short to serve. In my microphone, you tell me what I Now talk to me. Because I'm going to go to the front. 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 Because I'm going to go to the front. I'm going to go to the front. I'm going to go to the front. I'm going to Hapa, utadiu na watu wabao, hawapa tayari, wewe diu naona the importance. And you know it is important whatever you are trying to put. But they don't see it. Ukifanya hei utuma ukeo mtu wa sile utakuwa na asila mingi sana. Diyo mana lazima uambie mungu, God help me. Burn my desire. That nothing will stop me to do what I'm supposed to do. I shall not listen to what makes people to stop. I have a burning desire to serve you. That's the way people respond to God's call. Hallelujah. When you have a burning desire, you sacrifice many things. You sacrifice your time. You sacrifice your money. You sacrifice some people who have wanted to visit you. Sometimes you're not feeling very well, but you sacrifice to come. Sometimes you're on a night shift, but you sacrifice. Hallelujah! Amen. 
the devil cannot joke along with the people with these qualities. Some people's problems is not actually because of anything else but because of poor commitment in the service to God. That poor commitment, taking God for a light, operating like a free zone. Hallelujah. There are every reason every day. The people who have a genuine call, they know this. Every day, every moment, there are opportunities to say no to ministry and to do your thing. We have all those opportunities daily. That is why when you see somebody who is committed to serve God, so they go, hey, for so bad, I'm going to get a name. See, I'm going to get a name. See, I'm going to get a name. No, when they are serving you because they have that grace, see, I'm going to get a name. I'm going to get a name. I'm going to get a name. Praise the Lord. Murana Jai Maneno. How is your desire? Is it burning? Or it's a dying desire? Is it burning? Or dying desire? <laughs> burning desire to serve God. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Some of you are limited by very small things. At least it is a serious department to a channel. It is children, oh God. Burning desires. She never let it go. And you are here. There's nothing to complain. And we can look at you and say that there's nothing burning. Some of you here, God is going to send you far. You will go places. And one day you remember this process and it's like Pastor was seeing this situation. Oh. Oh, I wish it was that time now. Oh, I wish it was that time. I want you to conceive pain of serving God. Depend upon pain and desire. Don't pray alone. Don't joke aloud. Hallelujah. When you choose to answer God's call, you are choosing to step out and to begin to address the needs of people according to the will of God. It is our hunger for God that pushes us to develop this burning desire to serve. I want to tell you one thing. If you see people who are not having the burning desire to serve God, one thing died. The hunger for God died first. That is what died first. Because you can't serve him that you have not encountered. A burning desire has to do with your passion. It has to do with your decisions in the heart. It has to do with the convictions of your heart. Hallelujah. I'm not Mr. Perfect. But in all my weaknesses when I was a youth, there is nothing I can go back for in my youth. Mimsi, look at the idea. Kama ni kusimama ni kusimama. Nilishiwa na mkuu nikaanza kufaza mama yangu. Wewe mwaifa browse ya mama yako. 
na mimi nimefaa blouse na nikafaa baka jacket ya red ndio niweze kubidi au boy va kwa mama yako sio vile si kutaka ni vile nasikia i must do what i must do for my master na pindi sina pesa ya kununua <laughs> Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. The Bible says that also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. This is the way to respond. It is the time to serve the Lord. I am serving. The other way that is going to help you to respond to the call of God is prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. You need the power that launches people into their areas of assignment. And the power that launches people into their areas of their assignment it comes from prayer and a sacrificial way of prayer when you commit to fasting and while you are doing that you are doing it telling God Lord launch me into your service if you don't know it it is in the place of prayer and fasting where God helps you to be to understand what he has called you to do. Mm-hmm. I feel the Lord telling me that there are some people who use in this church. But I'll use people from this church who will be like light for my work. That is what I feel God saying. I'll use some people from this church and they shall be like light for my work. Because some Master, release your mantle upon us. Release your mantle, Kote Pare Kazala Bashabe. I feel a prophetic atmosphere. God wants to launch people. God wants to launch people. Oh, Karaba Basane. I feel a presence that is strange. God wants to launch people here. Some of us have played a lot with what God made us to become. But God is bringing back the fire to launch people. He to his service. Launch me God, launch me God, launch me God into your service. Launch me God into your service. Hi I'm lady. Oh. Hi I'm lady. Oh some of us the Lord is raising us to become solution givers to frustrate the plans of the enemy in the families. To frustrate the plans of the enemy. Oh some of us did not have abandoned to serve you take it so easily therefore God does not find a reason to use you oh God help us help us help us Jesus we thank you thank you for the spirit So I was talking about prayer and fasting. As we continue to respond to God's call by faith, there is a need to develop prayerfulness and fasting. It is in that place where we find intimacy. Hallelujah. That is where we find intimacy. 
that is where we hear God. That is where we immerse ourselves. When the hunger of God dies in you, you start operating mechanically. It's no longer worship for you. It is a law that you want to fulfill. And such a service cannot bring down the glory of God. God does not give no people into his presence. You must be willing. You must be willing. Kuna visima mungu anachibua. Kuna visima mungu anachibua hapa. And I want to tell you, some of us, God is going to raise us as a learning lesson for others. That God may cause them to fear Him. To fear Him. That God may cause uh, those people to fear Him. Oh, kare shara imasante. Mungu alikuwa na wengi lakini wakati walikataa kuingia mahali pao hakupungukiwa aliweza kusimamisha kazi yake We must answer to the call of God God is preparing you God is preparing you in different capacities you can start in whatever small way. It is Him that gives us the strength and the power. When we are weary and when we are weak. We are not alone. God will work for us. God will work for us. How are you responding into the assignment that God has given? You may not be a pastor like me. You may not be a chairperson of a leading a, a department. But there is always something for you. Just bow your head down. I want you to think about these things.